Hello, I'm Locke Meredith. I'd like to invite you to join me on the next Legal Lines. We're very pleased to have on this show the Attorney General for the entire state of Louisiana, Buddy Caldwell. Buddy's going to talk about the petition that he's just filed with the courts seeking that the new health care law passed by the federal government be declared unconstitutional because it mandates individuals, in fact, purchase health insurance. We're also going to talk about the duties and responsibility that he has as the Attorney General for the state of Louisiana, both in representing the state of Louisiana and its citizens. So join us on the next Legal Lines with Buddy Caldwell. Want to learn the secret to big savings on TV, internet, and phone? It's bundling your services with Cox. When you bundle with Cox, you get digital cable, high-speed internet with power boost, and telephone, all for one low monthly price. That's three fantastic services at one low price that will make you smile. The secret is out. The more you bundle, the more you save. So get a whole lot and save a whole lot when you bundle with Cox. Welcome to Legal Lines. I'm Locke Meredith, and I'm very pleased to have on the show today the Attorney General for the entire state of Louisiana, Buddy Caldwell. Buddy, thank you so much for being on the show today. Locke, well, good to be here. Um, tell the folks a little bit about yourself, if you don't mind, please, sir. Uh, just a little personal history so they know where, where you're coming from. Well, I grew up in Tallulah, um, played ball, football, baseball, basketball, the things that high school kids do. Sure. And, uh, and was good at it. Well, um, I was, I felt like I was average, but I went on to college and uh, played football, ran track down at uh, Tulane, uh, then went to law school at LSU and Tulane and went back to practice in my hometown in uh, about 1973. And four years later, I was elected DA and uh, Held that position for a long time. 29 years. It's amazing. Yeah, it, it was it, very interesting. And, yeah. the, and the, the term of the DA is? Six years. So I served five six-year terms, and before the end of my last term, I was elected attorney general. Uh, for the state. And that's really honestly just like a big DA's office and instead of the local boards you have state boards. But it's very similar and uh, DA's job was excellent training for the uh, work that's needed and for it's, our people. It's interesting too because uh, as I was preparing I read that you personally tried all the major felony cases. Tell the folks about that. Well, <clears throat> there uh, in the small places of course, you have to know the officers and the casework, and it was just something that I could do. That was my strong point, was going into the courtroom and trying these tough uh, cases. We're talking about serious stuff, murder, yeah, rape. brutal murders, brutal rapes, and so I tried all the murders and rapes and armed robberies. I uh, let my assistants try a few of them, and I always tried my cases, and that kept me close to law enforcement, knowing how to solve a crime, you actually, if you're good at what you can do, you help solve crimes. Sure. So there were several murders that uh, uh, I would able to help get confessions by having my, uh, telling my law enforcement officers what to do, how to do, and figuring out who actually committed the murders. A lot of those I had to do myself, and it was only because I was close to them and knew the people in the communities and had the contacts that I could do that. And in fact, from what I read, you had a 99% conviction rate? Well, uh, gracious. really, it's not that good. I lost one case in 1983, and I <laughs> lost another one in 1986, and I knew I was going to lose both of those, but I, I had to try those cases. But I say it's not that good because a good prosecutor knows when the case is not worthy. If there's a reasonable doubt, if you got some evidentiary problems, you throw the case in a trash can or you get a plea on that yes, kind of case. So that's what's important and that's why the conviction rate is so high. It's not really unusual for real good prosecutors. Uh, it's fairly common to have a real high conviction rate. So from what I understood, lost two cases? Yeah, one in 83 say that's and pretty one good. in 86. Uh, and, and because you held your position so long and were so hands-on, as I understand it, uh, the Attorney General for the state of Louisiana, while you were District Attorney for District 6, would ask you for, for guidance and direction or help. Well, um, I guess you could say that I personally served as Attorney General. We call it ad hoc. That's a fancy way of saying serving as Attorney General. I was appointed some 70 times. 
in 29 years to serve as Attorney General on various matters, including a lot of criminal cases all over the state. So I, I had some connections, and then I taught criminal law uh, for JPs, constables, assistant DAs. Was JPs very, are justice of the peace. Yeah, and uh, trained prosecutors, a lot of them, and I trained prosecutors for the Attorney General's office, take them into a grand jury, show them how to handle a grand jury, and educate the grand juries is very important. Because sure. people get to serve petty juries in court uh, during the actual trial of a case and in a grand jury to make the most important decisions concerning people's lives. Our everyday people make those They're decisions. the judges. Yeah, they really are. It's a very important function. And it's an honor and a privilege, and folks, I hope, will address it uh, accordingly. Um, I know in my experience, It's good they to have. do the jury duty. That's one thing. And the, the more they volunteer and the more people come to court, the less chance they have of actually serving. <laughs> so it's better for everybody to go, frankly. Well, and it's a participation uh, in our government, which yeah. is the number one important thing. Tell the folks a little bit about, uh, I mean, you come from a big family yourself. I think you were one of seven children. Yeah, I'm the middle of seven kids. I had five sisters, three older, and, and two younger sisters, and a baby brother. He was a baby in the family. My daddy was really an opera singer, an LSU graduate. And uh, sung in the New York? He uh, sang with the Metropolitan Opera in New York and Chicago. Fantastic. And he was asked by Governor McKithen to come back to Columbia, Louisiana, which is where we came from originally, Caldwell Parish, and that's where he met my mother, who was a nurse, and her family was from Tallulah, and the rest is history. <laughs> and what's so interesting is, as I understand it, the, you, call, you named it Caldwell Parish. I mean, your family has been here in Louisiana from the beginning. Yeah, that, that, that property originally came from Spain and was named Caldwell's, and I have land grants and a filing cabinet Fantastic. somewhere if the rats hadn't eaten it. The, the other wonderful thing that I noted uh, in researching and preparing was that um, you had the highest per capita, meaning per person in your district's recovery of child support. Well, I'm, pr I'm proud of that because we're in the poorest area in the United States. Those three pairs. Yeah. Madison, Tensaw, and East Carroll, and the way we did it was simply being fair to people. If somebody couldn't work and they didn't have a job, you didn't try to gouge them for the child support. And if a mother told a daddy they couldn't see the children and it was improper for them to tell them that, we made sure they got to see them and we worked with people to do the right thing. We helped people with traffic situations where they couldn't afford the money, this, that, and the other. And to me, Part of being a good public service is appropriately using the authority the law gives you. And DA is probably the most powerful position in government in the, in the state. And the more power you have, the more careful you have to be with it, and you should use it wisely. And that's, what, that's how we did that. Well, and as I understand it, and, and we talked about this before the show, I love your kind of life mission statement or public service mission statement. It was that you want, want Louisiana to be a place that your kids and your grandkids want to call home. And you know, we've talked about the size of your family. You had seven kids and six grandkids, uh, and you've basically been in public service for your whole adult life. Well, and that's good, and I've coached too. I've, I coach, you know, if you're a good parent, you go film the ball games and you coach. I coach my girls and my boys and all my kids went to the public schools. And uh, it, if you stay involved and you accentuate the positive, what, how are we alike and what can we accomplish when we uh, focus on what we do good and how we're alike? When we focus on our differences, that's when we lose. And uh, I did that with everything and, and taught my kids that and, and they've all done real well by that background. What was your inspiration? Why, why did you decide to run for the Attorney General for the state of Louisiana? Well, frankly, uh, no one else would step up to the plate and I saw that uh, law enforcement was going to lose the Attorney General's office and we ran polls to be sure that we were correct and the polls showed us that 81% of the people in the state liked a candidate with my background. They didn't know really who I was. Well, we're but glad you did it. Let's continue that on the next segment. This is Locke Meredith with Legal Lines, Attorney General for the state of Louisiana, Buddy Caldwell. We'll be right back. Everybody loves on demand from Cox. Well, did you know the love's about to grow? 
Soon, your on-demand menu will have a whole new look, making it easier than ever to find your favorite shows, access hundreds of movies, and thousands of free programming choices, even HD. Just like that, so you can watch what you want to watch, when you want to watch it. It just keeps growing better every day. See what's coming on demand and get more out of what you're into with Cox Digital Cable. Welcome back to Legal Lines. I'm Locke Meredith, and again, very pleased to have on the show today the Attorney General for the State of Louisiana, Buddy Caldwell. Again, Buddy, thanks for being on the show. Okay, glad to be here. We were talking uh, you ran because, uh, based on the polling and, and just your own experience, the Attorney General for the State of Louisiana needed to have the kind of background you developed over 30 years as a district attorney. Yeah, it became apparent, especially the criminal part from what was going on in New Orleans, that we needed some help. We needed our health care industry to feel secure with the hurricanes, et cetera, and everything that grew out of Katrina and some of that unrest in there. There were a lot of legal issues that were handled very poorly, and uh, I knew how to do those. That, that was my background, so that's what I brought to the table, plus the local and the help for poor people and everyday people. Uh, a lot of the consciousness was not there to help them, but I brought that to the table. And, and now that you are the Attorney General for the state of Louisiana, in essence, you're the attorney for the state, the government, and the agencies and boards, but also the attorney to represent the, the millions and millions of Louisianians. Yeah, there are a lot of things we do just on behalf of the state. We file suits on behalf of the state where they're needed, for example, to get Medicaid money back. Uh, we've done that and succeeded at that. We may defend the state in a road hazard case or where uh, there may have been some malpractice of some kind in a state institution. We try to get money back for that may have been taken from state lands. We involve ourselves. I in guess oil and gas rights. type stuff. Yeah, oil and gas and uh, there are a lot of anything, any legal issue, any problem that any of your listeners would have uh, a legal problem is going to be similar for the state. So we represent the state, state lands, and then we represent the citizens too in consumer protection issues, for example, in price gouging issues, contracting issues. And we've taken a different view to bring people to the table is what I've tried to do. Bring the different parties to the table and give them a voice instead of just suing them or putting them on the uh, six o'clock news like happened to the uh, assisted living places and our nursing homes who basically do a good job and so but some employee is going to do the wrong thing for somebody so why should they be penalized so when I started a dialogue with the people I found that they just really appreciated it and it helped us do so much more. It's a lot easier to do it voluntarily yeah. than force them for sure. Let, let me ask you this because in that capacity recently um, as we all know or most folks are going to know the federal government the Congress, United States uh, Congress, has passed this new health care law that mandates that individuals, every United States citizen of the United States of America, uh, has to purchase health insurance. And that you, on behalf of our state, have filed a lawsuit stating that that law is unconstitutional. Well, the governor asked us to consider that we what we would have to do anytime the governor of the state of Louisiana asked you to look at something as long as it's got merit to it we're duty bound to to file or do whatever is necessary in that particular case I wanted to make sure we didn't cost Louisiana any more money so sure. we do what we do say like sign on to what another state is doing and of course that happened pretty quickly so we would not have an opportunity to, to see who all is signing. It's not a political thing. And that particular case is not about the president, uh, as some people want to think or mm -hmm. want to say. It's about the Congress and the authority of a lot of congressional issues. It's not unusual for Congress to try to overreach, as we say it. In that, that case, the legal issue was is an individual can they be forced or mandated to buy something? And whether it's health insurance or other things, it's not as important. That's a complex legal issue, and it's a simple issue. But I do want to stress that when we agreed that it did have some merit, so instead of putting Louisiana to the financial burden of doing it, we just sign on with another state, which we have done and 
I don't know, a hundred other cases of different kinds. Yes, and let's explain to the folks, kind of give them the big picture of, of, of how this works and the reason that, that the position is being taken that it's unconstitutional. And, and my understanding is the Constitution starts out with we the people, the, the people, of the citizenry of the United States of America has the power and it granted to the federal government by the Constitution specific enumerated express powers. Well, people talk about constitutional issues and that simply means it's protected in the Constitution. So one of the issues there that will be contested and looked at is does the Commerce Clause of us going from state to state like we know insurance is regulated from state to state. The question is the extent of it. Can they force you to buy insurance or should it be that you just have the option not to take it. That's called opting out. And it's a, it's, it's a good legal issue uh, to do. Do we force people to do it? There's an improper tax, this, that, and the other. There's a lot of uh, issues concerning that bill. And since it's in litigation, I couldn't uh, sure. comment much further than that. But I can yes, tell you it's not political and it's not about the president. It's about the people and the people in this state mandating insurance. And we may you know, a lot of small businesses, it may affect what they do as well, but it's the power of the Congress and how far it goes. And the governor felt like he wanted to address it, whether we did it or not. I said it's cheaper for us working for $30 an hour than to pay somebody $400 an hour and sure. file it in the state of Louisiana where it cost us an arm and a leg. Let's just join up with somebody else as long as it's good. Legitimate. And as long as that's the law. So this is a normal, uh, type of legal issue even though it's going to get a lot of press and people are going to be crying and raising sand on both sides. Yes. But I can't help that. Uh, I just want to do my job and that's to, if the governor asks me, I'm duty bound to, to follow it and I, that's simply all I've done. Okay. And so, as, as I understand it, because the Constitution is the people granting power to the Congress, it also chopped up powers between Congress, the administration, meaning the president and the judiciary. And in the 10th Amendment, what it says is whatever it power we do not give to the federal government, the states and the individual citizens retain that power. Yeah, uh, the, that, that's the 10th Amendment that the powers are reserved to the states that the federal government doesn't have. And, 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 I, and most every attorney general in the United States, of course, I don't know who signs on anything before I sign up. A lot of these things are done within 24 to 48 hours. Yes, sir. Uh, but um, most of the, the issues that come up, we, uh, the attorney generals reflect on all kinds of issues, and that uh, is simply one of them. We did the same thing with the EPA. Uh, interest. Louisiana is an oil and gas state. Sure. And the, whether or not the EPA, uh, when they found ultra hazardous finding in Louisiana, whether that was appropriate, this is oil and gas state. And, that, and uh, our chemical industries, ne we need to make sure that federal government doesn't just take all the power and do everything. The same way the NFL wanted to to take to who that right. uh, was the same way with the federal government. And there's a big interest in nearly every attorney general. Most cases, we don't want the federal government taking over everything. And that, uh, I guess you could say, is, is a prejudice. And, and in the uh, health care thing, of course, that's an unfunded mandate. States got to pay for it. Which means states got to pay sure. for it. And that's an interest. And everybody should be interested in that, regardless of which side. Well, we'll continue this on the on the last segment. This is Lock Mayor with Legal Lines. The Attorney General for the State of Louisiana, Buddy Caldwell, will be right back. Some people still don't have on demand from Cox. Impersonators. Who are you calling an impersonator, pal? No, no, no. You insulted him a little bit. A little bit? A little bit. Uh, is there a reason you all aren't using on demand from Cox? Because I thought you guys would love access to thousands of movies and shows. The stars don't like to watch. No, they're all movies. It's tacky. Mm, did I mention a lot of it's free? Free is hot. <laughs> Boom. On demand from Cox. Perfect for almost everyone. 
Welcome back to Legal Lines. I'm Locke Meredith, and again, very pleased to have on the show Buddy Caldwell. He's the Attorney General for the state of Louisiana. Again, Buddy, thanks. Okay. We were talking uh, basically that a lot of times you as the Attorney General are, are having to file suit to protect the state's power and the state's interests against any attempts that the federal government uh, or steps the federal government is taking that might harm our citizenry or the businesses of the state of Louisiana. And that's kind of what, what the health care uh, issue uh, is falling into. Tell the folks kind of other duties and responsibilities or other areas where you have done that. Well, uh, Chinese drywall That's a has, big deal. has been a big one. You know, here we get hit with all these hurricanes in Louisiana, all our coastal areas, and so we have contracting, fraud issues, so you have price gouging during the terms of the storms, like in Baton Rouge, you know, you got all the trees falling over, so you got to get a contract to get the tree off your roof or off your car and whatnot, and the consciousness in the last few years of the storm damages and the natural disasters that we have brought a new consciousness across, especially across South Louisiana, but North Louisiana too, who's accommodated the people who are trying to leave during hurricanes, sure. et cetera. So I think the whole state has been better for that. But kind China, of brought unity, I guess, in Yeah, a way. It, it really has, and, and, and they say us Louisiana people are the happiest in the United States, and I think indeed we are. We have a wonderful state. Uh, our athletes, our food, our cooking, you our know. culture, everything. Yeah, everything is wonderful. Proud Louisiana. to be a and southerner. We're even happier since we won the Super Bowl. <laughs> I was in New Orleans, and of course, and I had to fight with the NFL over who owns who that. Now, we all know that we've seen Fleur de Lis before our lifetimes, and That's we right. know it's been on St. Louis Cathedral and a lot of other churches in this state for 250 years, more or less. It's kind of ridiculous for somebody to be claiming that they own it. But know? that's in essence what the owners of the, of the NFL were saying, we own the phrase, who died? That's right, and it was very important because there were a lot of families, a lot of people real excited about our Saints, you know, and. Uh, after all these years, I was there when they played the first game in Tulane Stadium. That's where I played ball, and we all got free tickets to the Saints game. We but saw there wasn't the a big crowd back then, huh? First game. It's been a long, <laughs> long haul for our Saints. And so our business people who may want to order 7,500, 3,500 T-shirts, they were told they couldn't do it. So here comes a big bully. Well, I had to, with my staff, get on the – conference the NFL Council and those folks and ask them, do you own black? No. Do you own gold? No. Do you own who that? No. Do you own who that nation? No. Uh, so do you own the floor de lead? No. So what, what, are, you what doing? are we no. talking about? So, I mean, it's ridiculous. And so they admitted it, and we had enough time so our folks could take advantage of it. Because I remember reading a lot of folks who had purchased that merchandise just took it off the shelves. So they were scared they were getting sued. Well, and it's for all over the country. Athletics have brought us together, especially on our college, and think of what athletics have done. They've made us do what I said the first of this segment, concentrate on how we're alike, what we share in life, and it's wonderful when we share those things. It's only when we start going to political and racial and all this garbage right. that we 100%. get into trouble and it's counterproductive. And, it, and it's why people in Louisiana, I think, are so happy. It's because we enjoy life, we're in a warm climate, and, it, and it's uh, just a wonderful state. And to d tend to these legal issues for the state, I'm real happy because I got a great staff I put together in a couple of years. Yes, we've had budget problems, but we're going to work through them and do the best we can to serve our legal interests, which are very important. You're not supposed to be able to affect a lawyer for the state for their uh, judgment. You can't not have a jury trial because you don't want to put up money for a budget. So they're supposed to do that. And all things considered, our public opinion say millions of well, dollars. And explain that to the folks, because one of the main responsibilities of you as the lawyer for the state of Louisiana is to make sure that all the boards and agencies and committees and police juries that are part of the government don't do something that's illegal. Why? Yeah, they, they may uh, interfere with the right-of-way somewhere. They're, there, uh, there are a lot of issues, reapportionment issues, and for Come every for school purposes. board, for the police jurors, for the uh, congressmen, for the state representatives, all these issues. I can tell you, 
If they contest each issue, somebody's going to have to pay an average of about a million dollars a case. Unbelievable. So we save millions of dollars by telling our local boards knowledgeably how to avoid that. Or how how to, so how to do it right. Yeah, how to do it right to avoid the legal responsibility in court because the lawyer's fees are outrageous in these things and expose the state. So being from a small place, I'm very conservative. Uh, I like to save money and save the taxpayer dollars, and that's part of what we. That's a big uh, deal. Do.